Hi everyone, welcome to Debugging Homework Part 2. In this homework, I'm going to show you how to use the debugging tool in Eclipse, uh, but specifically for this project and how to use it effectively. Um, so for this project, I would actually like you to debug together along with me the exact things that I'm going to do. So I'm going to start with a fresh copy of the debugging repository, and if you already have one, that's fine, or you could clone one along with me. So here we go. You want to open a terminal and go to wherever your uh, workspace is. <clears throat> so I'm going to type git clone, and then I'm going to clone the URL github.com ddubrovich omrdebugging.git. And it will take a couple of minutes. Okay, so mine's done. So now I'm going to go to Eclipse and make a new Java project called OMR Debugging, which is the same name as the folder name. There we go. And then the last step was I need to include the assets folder. So I'll go to properties, build path, libraries, add class folder, OMR Debugging assets. So there we go. Let's start by opening Optical Mark Reader. Um, many of you found this bug last time, so I'm just going to have us rediscover it now. Uh, first, I'm going to remove the print statements here and this print statement here. Um, a lot of you discovered with the visual debugging tool that um, there was something going wrong with get some value. Uh, a great technique, or rather, this is a better way for you to trace code if you're trying to debug by tracing, is instead of just looking line by line and thinking, okay, that looks okay, okay, that looks okay. Um, what you should do is you should imagine a specific set of values for these variables and then imagine what's going to happen. So uh, here's what I'd like you to do. This is going to be a two minute exercise. Let's imagine that we're going to run get some value with a row and column of 100, 100 and a width and a height of 30 and 30. So a 30 by 30 box with upper left hand corner at 100, 100. What I want you to do is Think through very specifically what range of values is I going to cover, what range of values is J going to cover, and does that make sense? So give that a try. So using those numbers, I'm thinking I starts at 0 and goes to R plus height, which is very clearly 130. So I goes from 0 to 130. Already that should be raising red flags because zero is in the upper left hand corner and 130 is like the lower right hand corner of the box that we wanted which started at 100 100 so that doesn't really make sense so J has the same problem it's going from zero to 130 and then if you look at line 72 uh, get pixel at is getting the pixel at R plus I so when I is zero that means it's getting the pixel at row 100, which is what we want. But then when i is at its largest value, i's largest value is 130, so that's 100 plus 130, which is 230. So obviously that's way too big. So that's, a, that's something that I noticed that I do that a lot of you guys don't do. It's you do look over your code, but when you look over it, you don't imagine specific numbers and then you don't imagine like what specific numbers will this be and this be and this be and that be. So, in, so it feels like you've done a lot of work because you've spent a lot of effort looking, but because you weren't looking with specific numbers in mind, it was like all that effort got wasted. So let's go ahead and fix this. If we're going to keep this as R plus I and C plus J, then I is going to go from 0 to just the height, and J is going to go from 0 to just the width. So that way we really have R plus height and J plus width. All right, let's now proceed to the determine bubble method. Uh, same thing, I'm going to comment, or I'm going to delete all the print statements, um, because we're going to use the debugger to actually interactively probe values. So here's what you can do. Um, determined bubble takes a row and a column and a width and a height and things and it's going to uh, find the average darkness of it looks like five consecutive boxes and it's going to try and find the darkest one and then it's going to output the answer. So what I want to do is I want to actually watch these values to see what they are and that's what you use print statements for. But as I'll show you, um, 
using the debugger is often going to be a more effective way of doing that. So let's right click in the, the margin here and go to toggle breakpoint. A breakpoint is a point where it will pause the execution of your program when it reaches that point. So if you've added a breakpoint successfully, you should see a little blue dot there. And then go ahead and hit this uh, button directly to the left of the run button, which is the debug button. Oh, uh, on yours it may not know which file to actually run, so we want to run main. So go ahead and double click on main and then hit the debug button. And it will say that it's debugging. And now it's asking if we want to launch the debugging perspective. And that's yes. Um, the debugging perspective uh, is what organizes the windows in this way. So here in the middle, you see optical mark reader. And this green highlighting shows that we are now paused on this line. Um, this is the first time that the program executing has reached this line. And here you'll see variables. And this is the value of all the variables. So I can look and see what is R, what is C, width, height, etc. So it looks like R is 113, C is 456, width and height are 37, number of bubbles is 5. So your first step with the debugger is just to visualize, are all those inputs what you're expecting them to be? So number of bubbles, I'm expecting it to be 5. Height and width, 37, 37. So that's a square box and it's not super big. That feels about right. Row column 113, 456. So that feels wrong to me because 113 isn't that far down and 456 is quite a bit in. So I think I just want to double check that. So I'm going to go ahead and stop it already. Um, and the way, oh, and you might want to go back away from the debugging perspective. So go to Java. I want to run the visual tester right now just so that I can double check those values. Okay, so it looks like I'm at row 476, column 111, something like that. So it seems like what this group did is they just reversed the row and the column again. Because remember, row is how far up and down you are. And as you can see in the picture, the first question is quite a ways down, but it's not that far over. So you should have a small column and a very large row. So I think we found our first problem just by looking at those inputs and imagining clearly where is that really? So let's try and now track down, let's see, inside main. Is main where it says where to do it? Nope, optical mark reader. So I want to see who's running determined bubble. Ah, top left row center. So again, the row is not big enough, call. So let's try and reverse these two. Uh, I'll make this call and this row. Okay, and both those look right. So row image, I just want to sort of see what's happening here. So row image is going from our row value and then it's moving by the vertical spacing every time. And then, yeah, I think they've reversed row and column all the way through because if I'm imagining how far how far down do I want to go? I want to go down a lot more than 280. So I think these are reversed as well. 280 also might not be big enough, but we can see. Okay, so let's go back to the determined bubble. Uh, the breakpoint is still there. So let's go ahead and run the debugger again. I might have wrong. Okay, I think it's running the wrong one. I'm going to open main and run the debugger again from main. And I'm going to say yes to enter the debugging perspective. So here I am again. So let's do the same thing we did last time. So now row and column. This feels better because I'm the row is quite large and the column is smaller. So I've gone down 456 and over 113. Width and height look right. Number of bubbles looks right. Pixels I'm not going to look at because that's not going to be that informative. Bubble answer we don't know yet because that gets set below line 43. Box width 7, that feels wrong. What's box width? So box width is width divided by number of bubbles. Well, so that makes sense. So it must be that this input width is supposed to be the entire width of the question. 
and you divide it by five to get the box width. But I'm betting the input to here was something smaller and then they're dividing it to make it even smaller than that. So again, the debugger is helping us because you get to look at all the variables all at once and uh, if you're thinking clearly, numbers that are obviously wrong should pop out at you. So let's try and go backwards and look at who's running determined bubble with width here. So here's determined bubble, it's the third input. So, yep, they're running it with horizontal space, which is a size of 37. But obviously, since it's getting divided by five, maybe a better name than height would be, uh, oops, maybe a better name than width here would be box width. You're giving it the box width as an input. So I'm gonna stop it and make that change. Uh, I'm just going to call this one box width to match what it's being given. And now I don't need to calculate the box width because it's already there. And now this has messed this one up. So the question is, is get some value expecting a box width here. So let's just visit that one. Um, width and height, but then it's being used as if it's the box width box height. That makes sense. So going backwards. I do really want to give this the box width. And then this height, you know, we should be consistent with our naming. The height is, it's being given the uh, vertical spacing, which is 37. So that's the same thing as box height. So I'm going to rename this one by hitting Alt Shift R and I'm going to rename it box height. So now everything's a lot clearer. Um, I can also make sure this makes sense. So C is the starting column and I'm adding to the starting column a certain number of box widths, and that, that makes a lot of sense. Okay, so back to debugging. Um, oh, I'm still in, in the debug perspective, so I guess I'll click the debug button again. And so here it is stopped at the debugging value. Uh, so box height, box width are 37 and 37, that looks good. That looks good, max bubble five. Aha, okay, so value, so value is the output from get some value, and the value says 233 um, when i is zero, so that's like the first box. If you go ahead and you hit this button right here, this green one, resume, what resume will do is it will start executing the program again, starting from the breakpoint, but then the next time it hits the breakpoint, it'll stop. So... From our perspective, that's going to run down to line 47, jump back up to 40, and keep going. Another possibility is this line here, step over or step into. You can use these to run one line at a time. So there I'm running the next line, the next line. As you can see, it reset the darkest variable because uh, darkest was larger than value. Or rather, value was smaller than darkest. I'm going to keep clicking step into. Now I'm back at the top of the loop again. And as you can see, i is now equal to 1 because we've gone through the loop once. And I'm going to step into one more time. Oh, I stepped in to get some value. So I'm just going to click all the way through get some value. Oh, this is going to be really slow. Okay, so I'm going to click resume, which is just going to fast forward it until we get to the breakpoint again. All right, great. So we're at the breakpoint again. This time, the value is 244. Let's click resume another time. The value is 243, 244, 244, 233. So what that's telling me is it thinks that E is maybe the darkest. Um, the last time through the loop was the darkest. So. I'm going to just go ahead and stop this and double check it with the visual tester again. So here's visual tester. So it doesn't look like E should be the darkest, does it? It looks like A should be the darkest. So let's look at it one more time a little more closely. Uh, I'm going to open main again, run the debugger, <coughs> open the perspective. I want to look closely at what this value is because this is the output of the darkness of the boxes. So I'm going to resume several times in a row and we're going to look at the i value, which is what box it is, along with the output value. 
So what I see already is that when i is zero, value is 233, which is pretty dark compared to pure white, which would be 255. So I'm seeing 233, I click it once, the next box is 244, next box is 243, 244, 244, and then, oh, this 233, see how i is back to zero? So that's the next box down. So actually it seems like it did work. 233 corresponded to A, and as we remember a second ago from the visual tester, the answer actually was A. So now in the next bubble down, it looks like it might be A again. We've got 233, 244, 243, 244, 244. So it looks like we've got a couple of A's in a row, A, So it looks like it's consistently returning A, but that doesn't seem right either. So now is when I wanna go back to my first debugging technique, which was the visual debugger, because it would be so convenient to be able to see the output of this and actually see what range of pixels it was looping over so that I don't have to keep going back and forth between them. So I'm gonna stop it. I'm gonna go back to the Java perspective determine bubble. All right, so I'm going to make this one static. Oh, uh, sorry, I didn't actually stop my program. Okay, we'll stop now. Okay, and now I'm going to go to the visual tester. And down here, instead of displaying the pixel at, I want to run, I want to run determine bubble. So, String result equals optical mark reader dot determine bubble. The row is going to be mouse y. The column is going to be mouse x. My box width and box height are going to be what they're using, which is 37 and 37. Number of bubbles will be five. Pixels, they never actually use, um, but I guess there's no harm in giving some pixels. So I'm going to use current image as the image, and current image dot pixels is the pixel array. All right, great. So that's results, and now I'm going to display some text. I'm going to display result uh, right where the mouse is. So mouse x minus 30, mouse y minus 30. But I also want to display some rectangles so that I see what it's looping over. So I'm going to loop five times and I'm going to display a rectangle located at uh, mouse, let's see, mouse x, mouse y, and width and a height 37, 37. But I want not just to start at mouse x, but mouse x plus the box width times however many boxes it is. So that's, so as this loops five times, the first time it'll just be at mouse x, but then with each new box, we're gonna draw the rectangle offset over by 37. Um, and then I want no fill so that the boxes are empty. So this should display both the boxes that I think that this one's looping over and also display what the output is. Doesn't help debugging when you introduce new bugs yourself. Oh. So missing semicolon. Okay. <clears throat> Let's try this again. Okay. Unresolved compilation problem. Why don't you like get some value? Oh, so this needs to be static also now. Okay. And this one also needs to be static. Everything static. Great. So, third drives the charm. Got a bunch of things open. I'm gonna close these various things. Fourth try is the charm. All right, great. So, here is here are my boxes. Um, right now, we're not displaying any output. Although, if you notice. I don't know if you can see it in the YouTube video, but there's a single black pixel, and when I put the single black pixel in the first box, it says A, B, C, D. So that's very promising. 
If I move down here, it says the answer is A, it says the answer is C, it says the answer is E, it says the answer is B, 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 E, A. Okay, so this visual tester has shown me pretty definitively, I think, that the output from that method is correct. So what that means is, if determine bubble is giving me the right outputs, um, but it's still displaying the wrong things, it must be that whoever is running determine bubble is looping over the wrong spots. So it must be that the problem is in here somewhere. I'm going to leave that last step as a step for you to, excuse me, for you to figure out what the problem is. And that will be it. Uh, I hope that this has been a helpful tutorial on how you debug. Um, I think sometimes it helps to watch somebody else debug a little bit to get ideas, like like look at what is it that they notice, what is, like what decisions do they make. Um, so definitely tell me if this was helpful, if you would like to do more of this kind of thing. Uh, I will see you guys on Monday.